Hey, my name is Josh Mahoney, Chief Market Analyst at Scope Markets. Let's look ahead to the upcoming ECB interest rate decision taking place on Thursday, the 18th of July. By and large, we don't expect a huge amount of movement this time around. You can see that with market expectations pointing towards uh, flat rates essentially across the board uh, leading into the press conference at 1.45. This is UK time and 3.15. Another appearance from Christine Lagarde. And so by and large, the focus really will be on the idea of a potential interest rate cut in September. Here's the uh, Eurozone inflation rate uh, in terms of its standing against some of the other major economies out there. You can see 2.5%. Now, this comes off the back of a recent decline from 26 to 25 So the disinflation trend continuing apace. Apart from the fact that it's not on the core number, the core number remained at 2.9%. So there remains the story around inflation uh, for services remaining too high, core inflation remaining too high, but headline inflation moving on a trajectory that should allow them to cut interest rates if they believe it to be necessary. Now, certainly the big recent development has been around the French economy and the efforts to try and uh, put together put together a government. The fact that it looks like it's not going to be a majority government is a good news story uh, and lessens the likeliness of of a single extreme party coming in and ramping up debt uh, in France. Elsewhere, we've seen some weakness, uh, ongoing weakness within the German economy. Um, but by and large, with inflation moving towards the downside, and you've got some question marks around the sort of strength of the economic outlook in the region, they have to balance up whether uh, they want to put the squeeze on and try to drive down wage pressures, try to drive down services sector inflation, or whether they want to cut interest rates once again and try and buoy uh, the Eurozone economy as a whole. Now, bear in mind, part of this will come down to what's happening in the US. The perceived the perceived actions from the Federal Reserve in September will be absolutely key here. And markets now off the back of the recent US CPI reading are feeling very confident that we will see a September rate cut. Uh, CME pricing it at around 96% chance that we see a rate cut and markets now seeing a second rate cut by year end as the base case scenario. So that increases the likeliness of a September rate cut. And so the question mark here is, you know, do we see this as a set? a ECB meeting where they're essentially laying the groundwork for a potential cut in September. Here's the breakdown for that headline inflation gauge. You can see 2.52 is the figure. And you can see uh, the next time around, we're going to see that minus 0.09 stripped out. So there's a good chance that we're going to see uh, headline inflation pretty much flat or moving towards the upside on the next reading. Then beyond that, we could see a little bit of a move towards the downside. Then we could move flat or maybe upside. So there, in my mind, is a good chance that for the rest of 2024, we see headline inflation remain in the mid twos, uh, with arguably August the only month where it's really set up for us to see significant disinflation. So the ECB will be aware of this. And so, you know, they may question the need to cut rates in September and maybe they want to hold off for longer. But the past two months have at least seen uh, the monthly inflation rate coming down in a notable manner with that 0.2 figure last time around. So the key here will not necessarily be uh, whether we're going to see interest rates cut because uh, pretty much no one expects that. But instead, uh, a look towards September and whether the elevated core inflation and the fact that we're likely to see headline inflation remain in the mid twos uh, stops them from cutting rates in September or whether the fact that they see uh, certainly at the beginning of next year, significant slump in inflation that could get us well below that 2% target and the idea that we're going to see the Federal Reserve cut rates in September and the weakness we're seeing in terms of the German economy and in particular Eurozone manufacturing, all of that could push them towards wanting to cut rates once again in September. It's notable that we, of course, have a significant disparity between the ECB headline interest rate or the deposit rate, as we have here, and rates from the likes of the Federal Reserve. Uh, pretty much all of the major central banks out there have got higher rates. And so, of course, if they move early and they move too far, um, then suddenly these uh, higher rates that you can get in the likes of the US make it very attractive to put your money elsewhere. And you, you see uh, outflows of cash coming from the eurozone towards 
the likes of the UK or towards the likes of the US as people are searching uh, a better return for their money. That means that we're likely to see the ECB becoming responsive to what the Federal Reserve are doing. And like I said, market is now very confident that we do see an interest rate cut from the Fed, and that increases the likeliness of an interest rate cut from the ECB in September too. As I said here, very low chance of an interest rate cut this time around. Icon pointing towards a 93% chance that we see rates steady as they are. But then September, just a 20% chance that we stay as we are at the moment. And instead, essentially 80% chance of an interest rate cut in September. So that's likely going to be the, the main theme behind exactly what we're looking at for this meeting. One other thing I wanted to highlight was this chart that I've been bringing up in the past with the uh, ratio or relationship between German and French 10-year uh, yields and then the likes of the, um, excuse me, the CAC and the DAX. Um, so essentially what we have seen here is that sharp reversion or, or reversal as we saw the fears around a potential uh, majority uh, for the far right or even the far left, but the far right in front. Those fears have abated, but we still see uh, the likes of the DAX as a major outperformer within the region. And therefore, if you're looking for a, a sort of reversion play, then you'd maybe see attraction within France. But um, as things stand, the trend remains bullish for the DAX when it comes to these two major indices in uh, the eurozone and so we'll look at the dax first and foremost and see exactly how things are shaping up at the moment we can see first and foremost that we've kicked off the new week on a relatively bearish footing you can see here this big red candle as we kick off the new week it comes off the back of a week that has uh, by and large been a, a very strong one now it's worth noting that the new week has uh, kicked off with a bunch of data points from China, and they weren't great, to say the least. Um, we saw weakness in terms of the GDP figure. We saw weakness in terms of retail sales, and that certainly hurt some of the luxury names over in France. Um, but we also uh, saw downside in terms of the likes of industrial production. Um, that, by and large, wasn't a big surprise. Um, but and, you know, ultimately it came in better than expected. So 5.3 versus 4.9, it was better than expected, uh, but still lower than the 5.6 that we'd seen previously. Also weakness within the house price uh, sector. So all in all, we're seeing weakness in terms of China. And therefore, if you're looking for an um, if you're looking at an economy that's relying on China, uh, then you're going to be essentially looking at potential weakness because we're seeing ongoing weakness in the Chinese growth story. The four hour chart shows you this pullback that's in play at the moment. Um, but by and large, I would say if we look at this sort of downward trajectory that had been in play, the break through that uh, descending trend line highlights the potential that this retracement phase is over. You can see here that we essentially have got a very clear uptrend. We see a, let me just grab that, we see a pullback into the 61.8 fib. We've rallied up through your first major swing high, which was at this level here. And we've broken through trend line resistance. So we're now pulling back. But for me, I've seen all I need to see uh, to be bullish once again. So we're rolling over. I would say that this is likely to be a retracement phase before the bulls come back into play with a break down below this 18211 level required to negate that view. Uh, and as such, I'll be looking out very closely at some of these Fibonacci levels, in particular, the deep zone 183.45, 184. Oh, sorry, we've move the entire thing um 18480 i think that is 18430 sorry um so you know near term we could see a little bit more downside coming into play um but certainly if we do see the ecb laying up a potential september rate cut then it should be bullish for uh, stocks in the eurozone uh, region and as we've seen the dax by and large, has been the outperformer compared to the likes of the CAC. In terms of euro dollar, we've seen some strength coming into play. And some people might say, well, it doesn't make sense because we've been looking at the potential for another interest rate cut from uh, the ECB. But nonetheless, we're also seeing a shift in terms of the Federal Reserve towards a rate cut in September. Markets essentially now pricing it as a done deal. I think maybe a little bit 
overly uh, optimistic, but uh, I do think there's a good chance we do see that September rate cut. And so we're seeing that gap between the two start to shift instead of them constantly pushing back these rate cuts uh, from the uh, from the Federal Reserve. We're seeing it uh, coming in increased confidence around that interest rate cut that also uh, serves to benefit risk on play uh, and come to the detriment of risk off assets, which would be the US dollar. So if we're looking for those interest rates to cuts to come into play for the likes of the ECB and the likes of the Federal Reserve, then we're looking for further upside for euro dollar uh, because of the weakness we'd likely see for uh, the US dollar. Nonetheless, as things stand, we've rallied up into this key swing high at 109.16. We're starting to see some uh, of that upside move fading. We'd need to see a break through the 108.806 to point towards a wider pullback coming into play. And so, you know, whilst we have got reasons to think we could see further upside, we've got a very clear downtrend in play here. We've rallied into this key resistance level and we've tagged it. We're starting to move lower. How far this move lower is we're yet to see, but certainly if we break through the 1088 level, then it gives us greater confidence that we will see a more protracted move towards the downside. But I would say ECB easing in September set against easing by the Fed as well uh, should uh, net out as being positive for euro dollar. So I wouldn't be surprised to see further upside, but I'd want to see a move through 109 one six resistance to give me greater confidence that this wider bearish trend that has been dominating over the long term uh, is uh, going to be negated or certainly that we could come back into this top end trend line you can see this big descending trend line we're waiting for the third touch uh, but certainly if we break this 10916 level that could point towards us rebounding back into that top end wider uh, descending trend line or essentially potential descending trend line, given the fact that we haven't seen the third touch for that trend line as things stand.